Hey, how's it going, guys? Mark Viglio for the Plains People Podcast. And, yeah, it's been a while. Sorry. Uh, it's, I'm in between producers and uh, didn't do a show for a bit. So, yeah, this is going to hopefully come out to you on November the 11th. Plains People Podcast. I talked to the amazing Tom Gillen. He's a uh, teacher I had at North Fargo uh, High School. He's a theater teacher and, you know, directs directs all the plays there. So, yeah, check this one out. It's a pretty good talk. I'm glad I was able to interview him. He's been very, he's a very busy guy. He left, you know, left school. Was uh, This is a weekday and I was still able to get him before he goes home. So, yeah, awesome. Very good conversation. And I'm excited to share it with you. So, here we go. Uh, Plains People Podcast, episode 18. Tom Gillen, check it out. <laughs> do, do not real. Do not be a. Uh, do not be a uh, shy. Okay. Anyways, how's it going? It's going well. So you guys just did a play last week, right? Yeah, we wrapped on Sunday. Wrapped on Sunday. So you just like your 50, 60 hour work days have now just gone down to forty. Yeah. So at, uh, <laughs> at four o'clock, I get to go home, and uh, <laughs> that's new, and I love it. So is that a double-bladed sword knowing that you got a play coming because it's like, oh, sweet, I get to you know do a play. They're really fun. But it's like, I'm not going to have a life for two months or whatever it is. It's Yeah, it's difficult, but you got to, I mean, you have to love it. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that's going to be your life. And that is why I'm happy that my family is involved. Yeah. Otherwise, I never would You'd see never them. You'd never see them. No, yeah. I would yeah. not. So, and it's, yeah, it's good that you're, well, of course, it's not a surprise that your kids are into theater. Just, you know, that's what happens and it's, it's, there's this nature live nurture there. thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then your wife was always, at least since I was a part of it, so this is more than 10 years, or 10 years ago, 10 year anniversary, uh, at least since I was a part of it, your wife was always either directing the one acts, I don't think she ever directed the big ones, but she was always there. Yep. yep. Yeah, or mostly. Yeah, when I, I started with an assistant my first couple years, mm -hmm. and then she opted out. For health reasons mm -hmm. and then um like my wife is the smartest person i know yeah and my she, wife is the smartest person right. I know, and she so. she loves theater she knows what she's talking about and so it was just uh and like i said otherwise i never would see her and mm -hmm. so it was a perfect fit and she's been helping me ever since yeah well that's good and i'm glad that the schools are like yeah sure if you've got somebody to help you mm -hmm. <laughs> they work then go ahead yep. i feel like uh, the theater department this is looking in from you know, the outside, the theater department is always like the principals are like, yeah, just as long as nobody gets hurt, just <laughs> take care of it. You know, as long as there's no one says the F word. <laughs> I try to, fine. yeah, I try to stay under the radar. And, yeah. Uh, what's Gillen doing? Oh, it doesn't matter. He's <laughs> no one's getting hurt. No one's gonna We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't believe you guys. I'll save this for later. I'll save it for later. Uh, okay, let's yeah. start. Uh, right. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, what time is it? So we're looking at. Uh, eight. Let's call it six fifteen. So we're gonna go to seven forty-five if that works or yep. whenever. Seven forty-five is my I want to get to. If, okay. If it ends before then, it ends before then. Uh, if it ends after then, then we screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long conversation. Uh, all right. So, uh, did you grow up? You didn't grow up in the Fargo Moorhead area, right? No, I grew up in Grand Forks. I think I knew that. Uh, I think I knew you went to school in Grand Forks. Mm -hmm. So that usually means you. Grew up there. I did. <laughs> yeah. You put it together. And so, uh, where'd you go to college then? UND. And was high, was theater a thing from the start? No, it, it wasn't. wasn't. I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a sports first family. Mm. And so, I have two older brothers, and my oldest, Doug, uh, was a baseball player, and okay. he played on the Legion team, and he was very very good. Um, the next, the next oldest brother, Bob, uh, he played hockey and he was very, very good. Okay. I did none of those things very good. <laughs> I, uh, I tried, I tried to play baseball. I tried to play hockey. Um, in sixth grade, I took up basketball and that's the one that kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't last picked, but I, no one would build a team around me. Um, so you weren't horrible, but you were right. Horrible. Yeah. Right. So theater didn't start for me until high school. Oh, okay. And it, was it, was it an immediate love? Did you have like what a lot of people do is the first time you're sitting on stage, you're like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> What's going yeah. on here? Yeah. So I just told this story to my seventh graders, actually. I 
I, in middle school, I was a band geek. I played, okay. I played saxophone. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play saxophone in high school. And I did not. I got cut. I got okay. cut from the jazz band because my audition tape was bad. That's and so I needed something to do because uh, my mom said that I needed a full schedule and I wasn't coming home early. And you didn't want to get forced into another sport. Right. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Um, I, I, they, they have drama as a class. I think that sounds okay. So I took it. Yeah, uh, just to fill my schedule up, and yeah, like I said, it was immediate. Like, holy cow, this yeah. is what this there, is what I want to do. There is something special about. I'm mean, not a lot of people get it, especially like you know, really hardcore introverts. They usually move on to being a techie. But uh, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's there is that thing, especially crowd. Like, I'm always going to be better with a crowd. I'm the worst at rehearsals because I can barely read, and I'm bad at taking direction, and I hate authority. So rehearsals, I've always been horrible at, but the second I hear laughter or a reaction from a crowd, mm -hmm. something always clicks. And I think that that is something that, you know, a lot of, a lot of theater people, they just, it's like a drug is you're yeah. like, I'm performing. Woo. There's like literally <laughs> a rough and endor endorphins and everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so that got you. <laughs> that got me. Yeah. And I started as a techie mm. because I am an introvert. Um, I know. <laughs> and uh, an introvert that teaches theater. Yeah. Uh, and so it took me until, so I was a techie from sophomore to senior year. And then finally senior year, I decided I'd try out for oh, something. You waited until senior year? Yeah. Holy wow. I, I was forced to. My drama director pulled me aside after my junior. We At the end of the year, we did like this uh, uh, student written one act play thing. Mm -hmm. Did I make you guys do that? Yes. I, yeah. I okay. wrote like a bunch. So I stole that. I stole that <laughs> idea from him. Anyway, so after my junior year one, where I was... Did, I, were they 24? No, no, no. no, no. no. You, the, we did ours. It was like our senior thing, like the our finishing product yep. was the right one. Yep, 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 yep. So after that, he pulled me aside and just said, you're trying out next year. You're okay. trying out. So I was like, okay, that's got to be a good thing. So maybe I won't get cut. And yeah. So I, I tried it and loved it. That's good. Uh, what was the first play you were in? That I was in? Yeah. Uh, the best... Well, okay, so I was in a play called Get Smart. Okay, and that is was it based off summer. like it's smart. It is, yeah. It was okay. Maxwell Smart. Okay, so it's a lead then. It was. Oh wow! Well, right out of the gate. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Uh, I uh, I'd be bitter if I said I never got the lead, but I never did. Uh, we can talk about that. Yeah. Well, no, we're, we're fine. <laughs> I uh, I don't need a ten years later critique okay. on right. my on right. my rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you were a little obnoxious. Hey, yeah, we know this. <laughs> I don't think there's anything a teacher could tell me at this point where I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like I, you don't think I, yeah. I deal with it more than anybody else does. <laughs> Whenever somebody enlightens me that I'm loud and obnoxious, I'm like, you only got to see me. Like I am me. You think this is easy? Like I can't turn it off. Like I always have to listen to it. It's horrible. <laughs> so, no. so sorry if I bug you during your work, <laughs> but, but I'm constantly dealing with it. Uh, I also, here's just another, I'm just going to start a fight between extroverts and introverts. Right. I hate that uh, you people, introverts, get the upper hand. Like, you guys can always say, like, I feel like you're allowed to be like, he shouldn't be around here, he's loud. But if I was like, he can't be around here, he's too quiet. It doesn't work. Like, I've been, I've, I have felt like you guys have the upper hand on on socially uh, controlling, like, hey, can you, can you quiet down? Can you down? No, can you be louder? <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's so sorry, funny. Sorry. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, so get out of my house. All right. I'm here till seven forty five. Yeah, it's true. So you wrote it down and everything on the docket. <laughs> All right. Um uh, yelling at you aside, so you were in Get Smart, was it you said it was like a summer thing? Yeah. Uh it's Grand Forks' version of Trollwood. Uh just spa. about to say that. Yeah. Spa. Spa. Like SPA. Summer Performing Arts. Oh well that sums it right up, doesn't it? it? Is. Yeah. I wonder what it is. <laughs> Yeah. All right. See, so, yeah, I did that. And okay. The next school year was my senior year, and then so my first show there was the best Christmas pageant ever. Okay. I feel like it. Uh, didn't you guys do that one? We did that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Billy was. Yep. Was that was there. um that was my last year, or okay. my no, the year after I was gone. Okay. Best Christmas pageant would have been yeah when I was out. So yeah, because Billy was a year. After me, so if he was in it as a senior, then yep. I was I was in yeah I was in college losing a lot of weight and barely eating and <laughs> drinking a lot of beer. 
<laughs> and that was it. All right. <laughs> yeah. We uh we realized that it was you know it, if you have to choose between beer in the fridge and food in the fridge, to go with beer in the fridge. Beer will keep you alive. And, well, it worked. I yeah. lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I had the opposite of the freshman. What is it? Freshman forty or whatever. I lost forty pounds in a semester. <laughs> And then my my uh, my mom freaked out and took me to a doctor when I came and visited and found out I was malnourished. Oh, no. And he's like, he prescribed me to eat more calories. And I was like, Doc, it's not because I don't want to. <laughs> like, are you gonna are you gonna give me a note to bring it to the deli counter and give me more calories? Because <laughs> that's not the issue. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's my my freshman in college jokes. I'm working on my, my type five for the comedy store. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, so you did Best Christmas Pageant Ever it was your second show. Yeah. Okay. How did that go? Is that a musical? Nope. That's a play. Uh, it's a play that is based a lot around the actors improvising mm. um, because the script is like 20 pages. But do it's do a... you have a love for improvision? I... Improvisation? I don't know what it's called. Yes, uh, improvisation. So you're, you're also an English teacher, so I just made you die inside. Imposition. What was that? Im imposition. No, that's not what they say. No. So, but yeah, you do got a love for improvisation. I can't say. Yes, I I do. I teach it to pretty much every every class I have from seventh grade to senior year. It is a, well, not only just stage, but it is just a straight up good skill to have of thinking on your feet, whether mm -hmm. or not you're applying it to real life or anything. Exactly. Like m most of the times in real life, you don't have a chance to rehearse right. with anything. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so. No, it, it, it teaches lifelong skills and you can just walk into any room and be confident. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Uh, so that was your second one. And you already said you felt the love right away. So then was it shifting? That's a car squealing. Wow. Yeah. No, and we have helicopters all the time too. <laughs> so there's a lot of time where I'm like, it's okay. I'm only recording this. Um, all right. So you said that, uh, you felt the, the, the rush right away, but did you realize, Hey, I might want to go to school for this right away. You no. only had a year to decide that because yeah. you, you got into it senior years. So you, there's something happened no. that senior year that clicked it. No, no, because uh, I, f my freshman year of college, I didn't lose weight like you, but I I was floundering. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, okay. uh, the reason I went to UND is because my my dad offered to pay. Oh, well, there so, you go. That's awesome. That was a no brainer for me, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And okay. so, when when students, when st my students now say, "Well, I'm thinking about taking a year off," I'm like, "Yeah, okay, yeah." I, <laughs> I buy it. Yeah, you probably should. I cause... well, I I push now that I have a bunch of student loans to pay and no documentation because of it. Mm -hmm. I I constantly push to like, give it a minute. Like yeah. if if you if you don't a hundred percent know, you probably shouldn't be going. And yep. there's even the people who a hundred percent know switch. Mm -hmm. Like my my wife knew she wanted to be a chemist, and now she has a criminal justice degree. <laughs> so so there's even even when you walk in with a plan you know, classes and everything. I bet if I, if I could redo it, just learning what I loved in college, I still wouldn't be still painting today, which I still do, but I wouldn't have went for school. What I learned, I mean, when I went for art, what I learned in that school is we had a lot of philosophy classes and a lot of sociology and, uh, and anthropology opened my eyes. It was probably one of, okay. and we had a crap teacher too. The teacher was horrible, but the subject itself, like literally most of my, you know, whatever you could say beliefs and how I look at the world came from that one crappy course. And I wish I could go back and study that of, you know, what brought, you know, civilization, like what that kind of stuff. So if I could just go back and just choose what to study, it would be like, yeah, eh, that stuff. But again, what kind of jobs in anthropology besides teaching anthropology? <laughs> and that's a big thing in colleges. Half the people who go to school for a subject go to school to teach that subject because mm -hmm. it's nothing that applies. It's they're they're going in to be academics, which is a horrible plan. It's 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 a romantic plan. It sounds so great to just hey, I want to teach something I love, but it's so hard to actually do it. You know, yeah. that's, that's my rambling. Yeah, yeah, that's what we get for doing this at six p.m. <laughs> I decided I started with a notion that I wanted to be pre med. Mm. without any AP courses Nothing. at all. I didn't do well in chemistry. Did I you, took physics. And did you I, take any pre-med courses? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was on the track. And so I like I got a D in my first college chemistry course. And so I was like, all right, that's that. I'm not, I'm not coming back from that. <laughs> so I switched up. Um, 
Yeah, I just, I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't, and yeah. I didn't go to class. I was horrible. Well, I was I was I I had that phase in high school. So. <laughs> I got through. See, I didn't. I was such a good kid, and then when I got that freedom in college, you don't have to technically come. So, oh, so I can oh play, yeah, I can play PlayStation. I oh, yeah, I do that. I remember having the like the realization <laughs> of me and my friend who, when she didn't go to school, I didn't go to school, and we just day drink instead. We're like, all right, if you're not gonna go, I won't go. <laughs> right. And I realized that like. Halfway through the semester, that neither of us went an entire week without missing <laughs> at least one class. Maybe not a full day, but at least one class. Yeah. And I was like, there's a problem. Like, that can't be okay. Yeah. And then we had a lot of drop-fail classes if you didn't meet the time. And we had one, one professor who, if you were, like, late from his breaks, and he didn't even tell you when to come back. He just assumed you meant it, it, assumed he thought it meant 10 minutes. So if you came back after 15, he would log in all those minutes okay. and then out of nowhere i'm thinking i have like it's a two-hour class i'm thinking i still have two hours off i'll take a day off but really i only had like an hour and 45 minutes because he was logging in those minutes and then i got a drop fail <laughs> i was wow. like thanks man like i don't okay. know if you realize you just flushed six thousand dollars <laughs> down but and you're gonna blame me for it <laughs> but yeah that kind of stuff and he actually sent me an email that straight up said i shouldn't be an artist he told me straight up because because it's not subjective at all. Yeah, all right. Things, right. Yeah. You and learn what he's going to tell you. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's also a good thing to tell somebody, period. <laughs> like, hey, that thing you right. want to be? No. You suck. No. You it's horrible. That. You're bad at it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, to his credit, I didn't drop out later that semester. So maybe he was onto <laughs> something. Uh, anyways. Um, so pre med, uh, was it about the whole freshman year is when you decided, no way. I'm not going to do pre-med. Did he make it all the way through the freshman year before you No, first switched? semester. First semester. Oh, wow. So you just had a pretty quick life. Yeah. No way. Yeah, that wasn't for me. Um, I, I do not remember the time frame, but for a while, um, computer science was going to be the thing. Okay. It would have been a good time um, to get into it, right? Right. But, but I didn't know what I was doing. Late 90s, where we're at right now, mid-90s? I... Yeah. 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 I thought late I 90s, knew, early 2000s. I thought I knew ish your age. Yeah. Because uh, you were... Like mid to late twenties when I started school, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. Then were you older than Jared? Yeah. So Jared was twenty five. You were twenty nine. I knew one. I knew it was one of those. You're a better memory than I have. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the one thing I got. That's <laughs> the one thing I remember. Okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, so wait, then let's scroll back. Uh, the love of your life, uh, Rachel. I'm assuming you guys, it's the love of your life, right? You married and have a bunch of kids. Right? We, yes, we have a bunch All right, of kids. Cool. So I'm assuming, I, I'm making this an assumption that you okay, love bring it. Okay, uh, I do. so I do. good. Um, that happened high school? Yes. And did you guys date right away or you guys friends forever? No, we were, we kind of did the friends thing. Um, oh, she's gonna she's gonna listen to this, and I'm gonna mess this up. Um, <laughs> oh, I can I can switch the question. No, because I I got I got This is a test for me now. So I was dating a different girl mm -mm. during the summer that we just talked about. The summer okay. that I was the lead in that show. Okay. I was dating a different girl. So in between junior and senior. Yes, but shamelessly kind of flirting with her the yeah. entire summer. Yeah. Okay. At some point during the beginning of my senior year, okay, we'll see, um, that <laughs> relationship fell apart, and that was fine. Well, and yeah, then, you were flirting with somebody else. I right. See why. Yeah, I see. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, Rachel was there to, to catch me in, in the rebound there. and it's a heck of a rebound. Right. And then it never, and then there it was, and that but was what, it. Uh, uh, Whatever twenty year rebound, whatever right. it is now, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Jeez. So yeah, and then so we dated uh, through senior year, and then um, and then she went to Minneapolis to study, and we did the long distance thing. Yeah, and that sucked. And it did suck. Yeah, it yeah. totally sucked. Yeah. And then we we stuck through that, and then married. Wow, jeez. Yeah. I, I'm such not a component for that of of like first girlfriend stuff and i know it's it's really romantic but i always feel like like i've had so many bad relationships that mm -hmm. if i just stuck with one of the first ones it would have been horrible <laughs> oh, there was a comedian there, there was must a comedian. be a luck thing Gosh, there yeah there was a comedian recently that i was listening to that was like oh you dated you you married your high school uh sweetheart oh that's great because you weren't going to meet anyone interesting in your 30s and i was like well <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> yes, no, I did. That. There's really no, there's really no uh, uh, defense either way. It's whatever you do, but you're just gonna hope that you continue re-meeting 
your wife is that you know that she's not going to be the person she is when you guys met, what, at 18? Mm -hmm. You know that she's not going to be that person forever, and you're not going to either, and you just hope that the two people you guys turn into also like each other, and the two people you turn into 10 years after that also like each other. It's a hell of a gamble. <laughs> but if it's working out, then it's We're working out. We're doing well. We're doing well so far. Yeah, and so if you if you know you know the score of the next Vikings game, well, no, because <laughs> apparently you got, you got a system. Uh, but... Anyways, I, uh, I my wife always calls me the failed one night stand. Oh boy! Yeah, so because she she did not want anything to do with me, and then it was just like I would text her like, "Hey, you want to hang out today?" She's like, "No, I'm hanging out with my friends." I'm like, "Oh wow, all right." And then at like two in the morning, she's like, "Hey, you want to come over?" And I'm like, "What the heck?" <laughs> and eventually, I I gave her the ultimatum. I'm like, "Hey, are we actually dating?" She's like, "No." And I'm like, "Then I'm not gonna continue doing this." And she's like, "Fine." And there we go. So now we're married. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so not quite as romantic as high school. Oh, I think it's similar. I... No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's similar anyway. Uh, but but I don't know. It worked out. Uh, there's this. There's this. It was you know a moment where uh, we finally one day whatever we we're talking, uh, we found out that we liked the same cartoons. And the first like real non drinking date we had was babysitting my nephews okay. <laughs> because. A cartoon she was watching, she was halfway through, Legend of Korra. I don't know if you're watching the Avatar, but it's amazing. But uh, but I was I was recording it off of my sister's DVR, and that's how I was watching it. She only watched, like, a couple episodes of the season. So she came over to help me babysit so we could watch all of it. And uh -huh. that was, like, the first time we... You found like, something in common. Yeah. And there, there you, go. you go. And then we realized that we mutually hate everybody in the world, and we grew our hate together. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, She's so a it's a little bit person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, I like to, I don't like, you know, even though I'm interviewing somebody, I don't want them to have the spotlight. I'm very, <laughs> I got to tell you about something. So you, then me, you, then me thing. So, um, so she went to school in Minneapolis as you were, uh, at UND yep. hating your first semester. Yes. And when did you decide, like, what, what were you going to uh, decide after that? When there, did you know you were going to jump right into theater after that? No, um, I, 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 I took classes in theater all throughout my college career because I that's what I did love. Yeah. So it, it took me, I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out, but um, probably something about money. Well, yeah, not everyone constantly money. tells you it's <laughs> you can't do something you love if it doesn't make you money. Right. And it's right. like, but well, you want to be miserable with money? Or... Yeah, so I, I took... Yeah. I took an electrical engineering class because That's my grandfather was an engineer. And so was it in the genes? I don't know. I had to figure it out. I don't think it works that way. No, but it, it was not in the genes. Because my grandpa um, was a con. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never went to prison, so I don't no. think they're in the genes. Um, so that didn't take either. And so finally, uh, I think my mom and dad just kind of sat me down one night and was like, okay, what do you like? <laughs> what do you like to do? And I was like, well, I like to read. I like to write. And I like theater. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I think, I, oh, I probably said directing too, because I was directing at the time. Okay. And they're like, why don't you find a way to do that? And I was like, y yeah, yeah, and I should do that. Yeah, well, how about, yeah. <laughs> you know, it makes okay. so much sense when you say it out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. What's the thing you want to do? <laughs> this. <laughs> do that. Okay. I'm trying to find something I want to do. What do you want to do? This. Well, you figured it out, buddy. Know, right? Uh, all right, so... About a year or so into college is when you finally figured it out? It had to be, yeah, a year, like two that. years, yeah. And then when did Rachel come back from Minneapolis? Uh, two years. Yeah, okay. her program was two years. So, wow. So, there was a heck of a, there's two years of long distance. But, I mean, Minneapolis, what, five hour, six hour drive from where you were? So, it wasn't too mm -hmm. horrible. No, it wasn't too bad. And we uh, we would trade off. Um, uh, I would go there to and, and she would come here. I would have just found one town you guys love in the middle. <laughs> Just like you guys just right. love Brainerd. <laughs> I always, I always get a hotel in Brainerd and just hang out. And, Where's know. that strip mall? There's a, there's a strip mall kind of in the middle, isn't there? I don't know. Of Brainerd? No, no, no. Between Minneapolis and I don't know. I've never take this. I, I've never taken this the, the Grand Forks to Minneapolis drive, so I wouldn't oh. know where the strip mall would be. Okay. But um, uh, I never really go to Minneapolis that much unless it's a concert. I've not really spent a lot of time there. Okay. Yeah, so unless there's like Ween or Primus or something there, that's pretty much All the right. only bands I travel to see. Uh, uh, Ween just did a show this last weekend, and I didn't get to see it because Ween and Primus were coming in the same uh, fall, and I had to decide which one to go. And I let my work schedule decide, and I worked during Ween, and I didn't work during Primus. 
So the whole family went to Primus instead. Okay. And uh, and then we switched to a double show because they sold out and they played two nights. And uh, I had a bunch of friends go to the second one and they did a nine minute cover of Metallica's Enter Sandman. And now I hate that I didn't go because that <laughs> sounds amazing. Like we doing Metallica for nine minutes. Oh, it sounds way better in Primus. But uh, I love Primus. Too. I couldn't I couldn't tell you a Primus or a Ween song. I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. Uh, I understand that not everybody is blessed with the <laughs> with a perfect musical. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what what would you actually say you're a big fan of musically? Uh, well, I listen to a lot. Um, yeah, I know you're one of those dabblers. Yeah. Well, we just we were at a flogging molly concert. Yeah, together. last year, almost and exactly so, a year ago. Yeah, I I would still I'd still go to a show of theirs any time. Mm. It was um, a fantastic show. Oh, it was so they fun. put up an amazing, amazing oh, man. show. That was a good time. I danced the whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, and even my wife, who only knew like some of theirs, was like, "This is I'm having more fun than any because they just they're so energetic and mm -hmm. it isn't just all right. We're gonna play that song. They just go and yeah. it was yeah, it was a blast. And that opening band was great too. I really liked I, them. Yeah, I caught the tail end of them. Yeah, uh, God, I'm trying to remember their name. Radkey, but they were like a three pe three piece. They sounded like Ramones, or not Ramones, like a like a uh, like a bad a bad religion, like a, a early '90s, late '80s punk. It was really cool. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> so yeah, mu musically, do, did anything ever grab you there? Have you always just kind of been like a like oh this is good, okay this is good, or uh, I guess my favorite band is still Dave Matthews, the Dave mm. Matthews band. So I probably could have guessed it. Yeah, <laughs> you just look like a Dave Matthews fan. Really? Thank you. Yeah, I don't except know what that I, means. I, I know you don't smoke weed, I so don't. it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, <laughs> I think you're the only Dave Matthews fan who doesn't. We'll and I'm see. pretty sure I stopped liking him when I quit weed. So we'll see what measure what measure three if that, come, that comes back. We'll you know, it happens. didn't work. Then. You know, it failed. I can't believe it failed, but you know, anyways. Anyway. Uh, we don't need to discuss politics because uh, everything I voted went the other direction, <laughs> and it made. And I'm very bitter about it. I'm very Sorry. bitter that literally everything I'm like, oh, I want this. Everyone else is like, you're wrong. No, either way, <laughs> literally everything. All right, I'm not. I'm not gonna get into it. Bob Dylan. Yeah. We'll okay. Another one. That's a good one. That's poetry. Yeah. That's poetry with a guitar. Yep. Yep. We're is. trying to get our kids into it. Really? Well, it's it's. <clears throat> I don't know. You got you got a teenager now, right? So, or is it two? How many are actually in high school now? Because um, that's Bob Dylan for me was like seventeen, okay. right when you're kind of going through your brains all being all weird. It's a good time to introduce yeah. amazing poetry. Uh, yeah, Ellie's fifteen. She's a freshman. Okay, so she's so one in high school. Do it. Yeah, and she. I think I think she can tolerate, and I don't think if we turned it off, she she doesn't say no. Turn this off, but yeah, it hasn't hasn't sunk in yet for her. It was literally like God. We watched uh, what was that? That movie, you can't be up there. Uh, that movie, uh, Dangerous Minds, the the Kim Cattrall teaching Michelle Kim Pfeiffer. Cattrall, Michelle Pfeiffer teaching the the inner city kids. Okay, I haven't seen that movie. What? I haven't seen it. Seriously? Seriously. It's like a teacher movie. I haven't You're seen it. You're a teacher. I haven't seen it. I guess you've ever taught inner city kids. Or maybe you didn't. Didn't you go to Texas for a bit and teach? It was not inner city. Oh, it was, okay. It was oil money. And... Oh wow. <laughs> okay, so it was not very far inner from inner city. city. Yeah. All right, but uh, but either way. There's this, I think it's this movie, but there's this great scene where there she's showing everybody poetry and you find out the poet is Bob Dylan, that it's all Bob Dylan songs. That's oh. what she's making them write about. Okay. And because of that, I got into Bob Dylan was uh, a teacher, uh, Mr. Smith, made us watch it. And that's how I got into Bob Dylan was through school. So that's weird. That's weird. Yeah, but whatever. It's, but it, I, I really do feel like, oh, he's going to be such a jerk. Oh, my God. He's the biggest jerk in the world. All right. Um, not, anyways, Mr. not Mr. Smith. It's the cat. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Mr. Smith. Well, Smith I mean, is, he's not, not a jerk. I'm kidding. Nice no, he was, he was a nice guy. Is he still there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, would I be surprised? No, actually, check this out. So I, I uh, two years in a row, did uh, at a post-prom, did uh, airbrush tattoos. All right. I knew that. And I didn't run into one teacher who recognized me. And it made me feel old and fat. Because <laughs> well, he didn't have the spiky old. hair. Well, that's probably it. <laughs> but I, I don't recognize them either. So I was okay. like, is it nothing but the newbies you guys send a post prom? <laughs> like... Well, I got to make a correction to Mr. Lucas. Okay. When he was on here. Like, Midgarden is still there. Really? Yeah. He was going to retire my first year. <laughs> that's not even a lie. No, when it's... I was in ninth grade, it was his last year. No. How well did my... he stick the landing? Yeah, my daughter has him as a teacher. Wow, lucky her. 
She is. He is by far my favorite. No offense. You're never my English teacher, though. Right. Uh, but he is. He is by far my favorite teacher I've ever had. Uh, I th- yeah. He got me into wearing ties, which I still do, outside of work. Mm-hmm. I just wear ties, and he got me into that. He taught me how to tie a tie. Oh, that's and that's awesome. because yeah, I didn't. Even if my dad was around, he doesn't know how to tie a tie. Mm-hmm. So, so I, yeah. So Mid Garden, like, yeah, way, way more influential on my life than you know an English teacher should be for somebody who doesn't read. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I read comic books. Does that count? He's Hall of Fame. He's yeah, just he is. He definitely amazing. is. He's yeah. up there. Uh, which is probably why he's been teaching for 50 years, because he knows how great he is. <laughs> he's like, you guys can't. You can't. Nah. I'm not going to leave this the way it is. <laughs> Somebody's got to be here. He says he keeps doing it because of the curriculum, but mostly because of Romeo and Juliet. He loves <laughs> to teach it to these kids and loves to introduce them to Shakespeare, and that's... That that's is... Ah. I want to just, like, screw you. Like, no, you can't give <laughs> such a perfect answer. Instead of, like, well, you know, that pension. Like, like I want to go up on a major's pension. You know, like, or something. Right. No, he's, he's he's there because he still believes that he's the best person to teach Romeo and Juliet. It's yeah. so important. Which, I, I never really liked Romeo and Juliet, so I'm kind of surprised he went with that. Other than his other books. But, yeah, I'm... What is it? Ninth grade was... He taught, I'm trying to remember anything else he taught other than Shakespeare. Um, nothing's really sticking. Oh, Odyssey. He yeah. did Odyssey. Yep. Uh, but here's the thing he did, and I don't know if he still does this, but his whiteboards were this big, changing, almost like a slow-moving cartoon. Each day he would have stick figures that would move around, and they would change each day and tell a story. And I got on the board. It started off as a giant donut. And he went and got a brown piece of construction paper, and it was this creamy chocolate filling. Okay. And creamy chocolate filling made a uh, return on the board throughout <laughs> the whole year, and he made cameos. So then it would always be like this this moving thing that teaches you something about, you know, uh, Romeo and Juliet or whatever he's teaching, but it would be fun and playful, and then other characters represented as stick figures would move on. And then at the end, he did his, like, cast list of all the like uh, uh um uh stick figures he used oh. but they're all just circles okay because they were so it'd be like a circle and it would be like ted <laughs> and there'd be another circle and be like frank and it would just like what who are these people and then it would be four circles and it would say the beatles then it'd be five circles to say the dave clark five and he had a circle with a tie and it was me oh so yeah so i made the board nice yeah and then there was a brown circle which was the cream chocolate filling Creamy chocolate. Yeah, I, I have not heard that story from my daughter, so I don't know. Yeah, well, that was, if he does. man, uh, freshman year would have been at least 15 years for me. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, even, and he was old then. What a change. He, he's got a, he had to have started in the 70s. Like. Yeah, because okay. the former uh, superintendent, Dr. Schatz, had him as a teacher. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. He's been around a long He's time. He's gonna walk in and be like, you don't have a bone to pick with you. I got an F on my Ethan Frome test. <laughs> Anyways, uh we can talk this whole time about Midgarden because I want to get Midgarden on here. He's my uh my teacher trilogy. Okay. Would be Midgarden would be the other. Tack would be one too, but he's up in Grand Forest yeah. Mountains. So but um anyways, how are we doing? Are we doing on time? Doing pretty good. Yeah. This is about where I want to be when I'm starting to wind down, so we're good. Um Usually takes about this long to break the ice, too, so 30 minutes is when you get into it. Okay, let's go. Uh, we're on it. Uh, I just want to cut out the first 30, usually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's get up to close to present. Um, okay. So we're on... You're just now figuring out what you want to do. Rachel yep. and you are... She's visiting you, going, you guys going back and forth. Yep. All right. What happened next? Oh, boy. Well, then I figured it out. I, I knew what I wanted to do, and... Uh, I figured out that Rachel was, was awesome and we should yeah. be together. And so that all happened. Yeah, we got married um, in college. Whoa. Uh, I, was, I was 21. Um, Jeez. And then uh, I credit her because, well, she she credits herself. But I ended <laughs> my last my last year of college. I was 4.0. Mm. 4.0 kid. So she says that's, that's why. I couldn't imagine getting married with classes. Like, unless somebody <laughs> handled your guys' wedding for you, planning our wedding, doing everything like that, we, we like, 
I don't know. That was if there's any strain on a relationship, it was planning a wedding for us, and it wasn't even like we disagreed with anything. We mm-hmm. agreed with e- with each other. It was just constantly having to do things and get these guys and get these guys. We kept it really simple. Rachel, oh, Rachel that, took that a lot of the it. planning, but her dad's a pastor, oh. and so we had the location. Yeah, um, like that. We had uh, we we chose a, the pastor she had in Minneapolis. Okay, um, but it was it was real easy and sounds pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. We, we did it at a zoo, and zoo. I, yeah, right. and we had to get a uh, pastor who, uh, you know, wasn't religious, but would lie to Leslie's mom and say she, he was, because <laughs> <laughs> that was really important to her, yeah. uh, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was a good one. We had uh, uh, a big taco bar. It was at the zoo, so if you do a wedding at the zoo, this is the best thing. You can drink. You can, if you bring in a bar, if you cater in alcohol. You can do, go ahead and do it. So I pretty much straight up stole a wedding from the guy from a wedding I was in like three years before that. I was in my my buddy Matt's wedding. It was at the zoo. It was like I literally stole everything down to the caterers <laughs> and even the tuxes were exactly the same because okay. we just stole this wedding right up from under him. And it was it's a it's a great you get to be drunk on a carousel at a zoo. What else do you want? Like that's yeah no no. There's probably you're gonna throw up. Yeah, there wasn't a lot actually. I think <laughs> maybe a couple of people. Her mom got wasted fast, which I took personal. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my mom showed up like that, so no one did. Everyone knows that's just her natural state. I'm kidding. Uh, and yeah, no, it was a pretty good one. There's just something special about getting drunk at like around wolves. <laughs> like, like there's animals that can rip us to shreds on that side of the glass, and yeah. we're like, "Woo!" You, know? it's, it's you can't do blast. anything to me. Uh, Billy was one of my; he was my co-best man, and my brother was my other co-best man. Okay. And uh, thanks for the invitation, by the way. Oh yeah, well, I didn't go to yours either, so <laughs> take that. We didn't even have any; we couldn't even invite friends. Oh, there okay. was we there was it was such a big wedding that we had to tell people like crash it. Like, mm-hmm. I can't hand you this invite, but <laughs> crash it. Like, I'm not going to be offended, dude. Wait until all the, like, 50-year-old people who are not drinking all night leave at 8, mm-hmm. show up, drink with us till 11. Like, that's, and that's what a lot of our friends did. The, like, the ending crowd was, like, 50-50 invited. Okay. <laughs> like, which was what we wanted. But yeah. We rocked the boat a little bit because we, we were one of the first, uh, people on on my wife's side of the family to have a wedding dance wow that was it was a little risque um <laughs> and we were did, you allowed to kiss her yeah okay just making sure yeah. oh actually so a funny story we um we were doing our wedding photos and uh one of them the photographer we had the whole crew behind us okay mm-hmm. and she was like all right and you two are gonna kiss now and everyone's gonna like woo and cheer and stuff and so obviously we we we've been kissing a lot up to the wedding i sure hope so and so we're like all right we got this and so we you both don't wanna, you don't want to both ready to go up. and all right go ahead and we both lean in the exact same way and we're like totally screw it up and every oh it was awful it was so embarrassing it was like <laughs> we'd never done this before maybe, yeah maybe her dad was really happy about that yeah i don't know good he's been a kissing good <laughs> so uh, anyway so we had this we had the wedding dance my my father uh got us the grand forks country club which oh, wow. had you know, hey, the bar's open, mm-hmm. which was another issue we had to tackle. Um, and you were 21. Yeah, that so wasn't a problem. But I don't see the issue. <laughs> but me but being me. pastor's daughter and stuff. Yeah. Like, what's that going to look like? You know, we had to we had to deal with that. But at the end of the night, more of more of her side of the family was on the dance floor, having a good time. Nice. And my side of the family. Oh, and wow. So I was like, yeah. all right, there you go. So you guys it did it. It was a good idea. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Uh, here's a, here's a story, uh, about the kissing that makes me, uh, I brought up like, God, I can't remember what it was, but the, maybe it was just the, the, the person who handled our wedding was just very talkative and told us this story. I don't know how it got to the story is what I'm saying, but she told us, uh, that a wedding that she had a little bit before ours, um, asked if they could go into the wolf's den, which of course they can, you could go anywhere throughout the whole wedding, but like, can we go to the wolf's den and practice kissing? And the person's like, for one, you don't have to ask me that. Two, what? <laughs> and they never have kissed anybody before. Oh. It was a never kiss period. Okay. And I was like, that's going to be the worst wedding night. <laughs> like, they don't even have <laughs> kissing. 
Like, do they know what the other stuff is? <laughs> like, holy wow. Yeah, I, I I tell everybody now who gets married, like, uh, the wedding night is taking uh, is taking bobby pins out for an hour. <laughs> That's literally what it is, is. Is I now drop that to other people who get married, and they're like, totally. That's what it is. And I had a bad nosebleed on my wedding. I had an abscess tooth on my front tooth that showed up on my wedding day, and three days into my marriage, I had to get a root canal. Yeah. So I, so that <laughs> night was literally like me bleeding over a sink full of bobby pins, and I was like, "So you want to make out?" <laughs> like it's horrible. It was okay, so, very uh, not a not right. a romantic. So you opened night. it, so I'll, I'll I'll take that bait. Uh, okay. So wedding night for the Gillens was <laughs> um, we got back. Uh, my brother got us uh, a real nice room, and so we just crashed a, mm-hmm. and we kind of just looked at each other and we're like, "Did no. you have? Did you have any food? No." Did you have any of the cake? No, no, I didn't have any of the cake. We gotta go to the vending machine. So yep. that's what we did. Did the same. We went yeah. and got snacks at the vending machine. Just sat there and ate vending machine food for a while. Like, okay, this is. I'm tired. I'm tired. You're so <laughs> exhausted too. Is oh. there's this big mystique of the wedding night? Anyone who actually gets to enjoy their wedding night <laughs> must have had somebody plan their wedding for them, right? Or they must have one of those, you know, chicks with the Bluetooth who keeps everything mm-hmm. moving. Because y- you have to do it. Yep. You think you're really in the mood to do anything? I was drinking for 15 hours at that point. Like I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> like, it was a rough. And then she found a uh, she found a Donner Party documentary on on the on the TV. So I was like, really spice it up, All honey. Right. <laughs> Let's watch something about Mormon cannibals to, to get the juices flowing. <laughs> like, wow. Geez. Yeah. So uh, and then my friend, I had two friends or three. Um, two friends and a wife, so three friends, uh, came up from Seattle, drove all the way up to Seattle for my wedding, and I get a call from one of them, it's like, what are we going to do for food? Just, he just calls me, and I'm like, yeah, it's my wedding night, but <laughs> nothing's going on, whatever, what's up? And he goes, I, I don't feel like I'm done with the night yet, and I was like, well, we have a bunch of beer, and we just ordered Deke's Pizza, and he, I was like, but we're at this hotel, and he goes... I think I hear you. And then a knock happens and he had the room <laughs> right next to us. So then him and like four other people came in and ate our pizza as we we're like half wearing our wedding stuff, right. watching a documentary on the Donner Party. So it actually was a good way to end the night, I think. <laughs> oh, good. And, and we had a bunch of beer. So yeah. And now it's a story. So yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's good. It's not a fun story, but it's definitely a story. <laughs> All right. So it's been at least 50% me this point so uh let's let's have you talk for a minute um that was still in college so then you said you got 4.0 so you graduate graduated uh what school you said und yeah did you go there the entire run mm-hmm. yep now they wow. didn't have they did not have a theater education degree that you could okay. get so what did you get so i had to get an english degree okay um and that that was the plan um because i wanted to see if i could backdoor into uh uh, theater okay gig so so the plan was to get in as an english teacher and backdoor into theater yes because okay. you see you run into a lot of a lot of a lot of times you go to these like one act festivals mm-hmm. and you see these plays directed by english teachers who kind of are forced to do a play yeah i wanted to be the opposite i wanted to be a drama teacher who's kind of forced to do, to english. do english and that's and you nailed it i did yeah i did that's exactly what i did <laughs> yeah you're 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 10 for 10 at this point you're just getting it so uh, so that's what I did. I got my English degree. So my English degree says I'm qualified to teach drama. And so thankfully I had all those theater classes and all that experience to back that up. Yep. Um, and then I tried and failed to get a job in Grand Forks, which okay. now it's it's a blessing, I think. I think it's a blessing in disguise. I like time. Fargo. So. Yeah. And but no no eighteen year old does. I hated it when <laughs> I, outside of school I hated it. But now that I've come back and and you know, I've, I got a Stockholm syndrome for it now. Well, as a young adult, like just when we would go on trips, my family, we would drive through Fargo. Mm-hmm. It was never a place I was like, oh, I want to live here. Oh no, it's fly just nothingness. Fly through the interstate, and yeah. it was always those neon signs everywhere. And I was like, this is gross here. Yeah, and, and it is. Yeah, <laughs> but it's got a charm to it. Yeah, uh, I had a, a my my friend's wife who came. And I'm not trying to talk crap about her, but my friend's wife who came here uh, from Seattle when she left, put out a Facebook post. That was like, only people with their heads up their ass would ever live in Fargo. Like, that was the worst place I've ever been. I was like, <laughs> so I, I commented like, you like the wedding? <laughs> like, really? But I mean, I get it. When when I was a kid, 
especially moving out to Washington, the second you see what scenery looks like, you're like, whoa, there's something to look at? In Fargo, there's nothing. You can watch your dog run away for two days here. It's <laughs> flat nothingness. But I feel like it's got its charm. It's like we... It makes us harder, like rougher people. Yeah. We have to figure it out. I, no, I, I, I love it. I love, I love our neighborhood that I live in, and mm-hmm. we're walking distance to downtown. So yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's see. I got a job in Texas then. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what the name of the town was? Uh, Katy. 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 Where's Texas. that? Where's it's, that at? Katy. Or Texas is like four things. It's like four Texas. It's it's Houston area. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Uh, yeah. east, east end of Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and Katie is, I guess now I've, I've met, it's considered kind of a suburb of Houston. Houston kind of sprawled out to it. Yeah. Which is what cities do. Even yeah. Fargo's doing it. Um, but yeah, so I went and I got a teaching gig at Beck Junior High and the poverty rate there was less than 1%. And so Rachel and I said, that's us. We're probably the, the less than 1%. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Holy crap. Yeah. Well, honestly, the teachers probably got pretty dang close to the poverty <laughs> line of what they made. Yeah. If, if what was 40 grand, is it, was that the poverty line at that point? Is it, it, is it 40 now? I think that I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure either. But either way, you yeah. got, unless you're pulling some second job, you're probably closer to the bottom if that's the poverty rate. Jesus. So no, not inner city yeah. at all. Um, and, but it was a big enough school and a big enough theater program that there were two yeah. full-time theater teachers. Not there. Oh. Which was pretty... Two full-time clear. theater teachers? Yeah. Is that what you said? Capone keeps trying to get on the table. That's what that is. And he's, yeah. not, he's not gonna. Yeah. He's a jerk. Uh, honestly, he'll never come into this room unless I'm in it. And I, and he's not in here now to hang out with me. He's in here to get in front of me and break things. It's he'll <laughs> knock everything off the table. He'll sit on what I'm working on. He'll mm-hmm. rip the papers. He's just a jerk. He just, and he wants you to know it. He can't go into the other room and break stuff. He's like, he has to make eye contact with you as he knocks the beer yeah. over. Anyways, let me... <laughs> Probably a good thing I don't have a kid. If I just, <laughs> just, that kid's a jerk. That's you know, what kids will do. Yeah, well, that makes sense at least. Yeah. Cats should just chill and right. sleep in the corner. It's supposed to be easy. Anyways, uh, so you had there were two theater teachers, so you were able to get a theater gig there. Yes. Okay. And how long were you there? Two years. Two years. So was it still what two to three plays a year there too, or? Uh, they did two shows. They did a musical and then a non. Yeah, you know, just like you guys do, but you throw in the one acts. Yes. And do you still have that? Uh, the same formula as when I was there was one act, two, uh, one musical, one long straight show, two act, two, two act straight show, and then the one act festival, or the twenty four hour uh, one act. Yep. 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 And then and we have the improv team. Okay. Now the improv team started when I was there. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure why I didn't get into it. Um, I think I was too busy drinking. I think that's what it was. I think it was like another thing. Seriously, in senior year, I kind of I really liked theater. I didn't really like doing plays as much anymore. Okay. Yeah, and and also I can't sing. That I gotta ask you a question okay. because I I tell this story to a lot of every year. I think it comes up, but I I don't, I don't know, know if it's it. true or not. Oh God! So I just have to clear the air. <laughs> all right. This all right. How long did it take for the conversation to get good? All right, we're good. So the play was It Runs in the Family. Yeah, I love that play. You played Bill. Yeah, no, an 80-year-old man. Yeah. His name was Bill? His name was Bill. All right. Dirty old man. Dirty old okay. man. Okay. Drank a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you show up to a performance drunk? Not a performance. Okay. I showed up to a rehearsal drunk. Okay. I never showed up to a performance drunk. Okay. Uh, I've been telling the story wrong. No, <laughs> no I showed up to a rehearsal drunk, and it was the first day you gave me a compliment. So I made oh. I made the joke yeah, that I need going. to start showing up oh. drunk because I apparently nailed it. But but well, I you were uh, playing a drunk character, so yeah. I was like, "Wow, Mark's <laughs> bringing something." What is but that? I'm also I've always been really good at playing a drunk character. <laughs> uh, it's easy; you just slur your words. It's not that hard. But uh, but no, I never did a performance drunk. Okay. Uh, but it, can I tell you my biggest memory of that show? Sure. Uh, it's not anything bad. Um. But I remember being the bane of, of the second act because I'm not good at memorizing lines. Mm. Is during the dress rehearsal, I almost called mine like I wanted to, and you saw that I wanted to, and you were like, "Are you 
kidding me right now? Like, tomorrow. Like, we're doing it tomorrow. And, uh, like, so I, I'm very bad at remembering lines. Uh, I noticed it when two of the other actors were able to whisper them to me. And I'm like, damn it. And that's how bad it is. And then uh, our first actual show, uh, I killed it. And you walked up to me and you said, I was so nervous about you today. And you brought it. And I was like, yeah, you gave me a people. <laughs> you gave me somebody to act in front of. I can't do rehearsals. But uh, but yeah, so that was actually one of the, like, probably the biggest compliment was like, like, what did you, what happened? <laughs> like, did you memorize lines? That, you know, just, you, you need, I feel like you just need that atmosphere or else it's not going to, yeah. like a, a rehearsal is, is, is really trying to get something without a big missing piece and that big missing piece is the energy mm -hmm. of can you pretend like you're acting right now and you're never going to be acting until you're actually in front of people in my eyes like it, it really adds to the whole oh, yeah. it's the last elements that yeah you have to have and it's it's hard to do it without that element <laughs> that that element at least for me but um and that play it's been a, it's been a, it's been enough years i can talk about this so that play taught me a lesson that i've learned and i've, I've kept i've kept it can throughout. i make the joke no, um, <laughs> no, I was gonna say make a stronger set <laughs> because I kept busting through the set. No, okay, but I picked that show for one actor. Mm -hmm. I, I picked it, and uh, for I was for TJ Gaskell, and, and he didn't do it. He didn't try out. He didn't do it, <laughs> and he would have been perfect. I really hope TJ listens to this. He listened and... to one of my other ones, so I'm glad he listens to it. And so I was like, he would have been perfect. He would have been perfect, and that's why I picked it. And then he didn't try it out, so I was like, crap. And then it went to uh, Glazer. And Glazer and Glazer, Glazer did, nailed it. He did great. But but also that was a that was such a one person's show as he had hundreds of lines. He had so many lines in that show. He was the glue, but the the guy who makes that show go was was TLP, Tyler. Uh, oh yeah, 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 about. yeah. I mean, yeah, Dan had to keep the thing moving. He was the straight man mm -hmm. to Tyler's comedy. Mm -hmm. And he, they both did a and fantastic you had, you had a 17-year-old who shaved his head like he was bald. Yeah. And it, yeah, Tyler shaved his head like he, he was, was bald. Out. And it was great because I just could walk in and make fart jokes. Yeah. It was perfect for me. Yeah. I got to do a really old, try to try my uh, attempt at a old British accent. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I was, I was just watching Faulty Towers over and over again and trying to do major. Okay. That's what I was trying sure. to do because he has that great ah, and I was I was trying to do that. And you had uh, the balloons up top lines. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Balloons up and uh, balloons Gautam up tiles. Top. Yep. Was my line. Uh, somebody he somebody died but didn't die, and then he said it was Gautam tiles, and I kept throwing the it back into his face. Mm -hmm. I, what I loved about that play it was the most British thing there is. Like that play was it. It read so much like John Cleese could have been doing mm -hmm. it. Like it really felt like. You know, British comedy, at least from what I understand, is uh, one dude does something stupid and then lies for two hours. Yeah, that's and then farce. everyone yeah. has to deal with his lie. And yeah. that's what the comedy is. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what that show was. I really want people, someone in this town, to to discover Ray Cooney and start doing his stuff. Was that, was that a Ray that's Cooney the, play? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the author. Because um, I'd I'd try out for that. Yeah. Second. Yeah, it would be it would be a fun one to yeah. eat anything like that. But uh, well, I don't know. What's the theater B up to or Studio B or whatever they're called? Get them to do it. I they always went, do political stuff. I just went to yeah, I just went to a play. Uh, uh, what was it called? My friend was in it. No, oh, I'm. I don't know. Well, you Church of State. Church of State. Church of State. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, my friend was in that too, so we're good. Okay. Yeah, I actually had him in here. Uh, pretty good stage actor. Um, uh, uh, Jacob Harchi, this bald guy. Um, the beard. Okay. But anyways, he's one of my nerds too. So he he's he he was able to give me uh, since he grew up being a, a role player like Dungeons Dragons type role player he got that love first and uh, in tying that in with acting and why they go hand in hand to him of oh. he because role playing is pretending you're somebody else and then rolling dice and that's also improv too mm -hmm. but so here check this out after me playing for years I finally brought Billy into a role playing game. And he killed it. Like he was, <laughs> he's one of the best role players. And then somebody's like, "Dude, he's a natural." It's like, "Well, he's, he's a stage actor." And they're like, "What? <laughs> like that's not even fair. You can't bring in an actor." <laughs> and he did like a, he was it was a Star Wars game, and he was playing Amon Calamari. They're like a Admiral Akbar, okay. that like big fish. And he kept the accent the entire time on his wow. first game. He goes, oh, 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 
talk like that the whole game, and everyone's like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. But anyways, uh, all right, where are we at? Uh, so you're in, you're in uh, Texas. Yeah, we jumped around. Uh, yeah, Texas. Yeah. And I was learning how to be a teacher. I sucked. I sucked big time first two years. Like English or just It anything? was theater. It was theater. Just, just teaching theater? It was, yeah. Because college didn't really teach me how to write a theater curriculum and how oh, to do yeah. that. And so I was I was punting every day. I had, okay, I had sixth graders read The Crucible. Ooh. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. what I was doing. I mean, what? They have sophomores and we're not too much better a year later. <laughs> so it's, no, no, that would be four years later. So yeah. yeah. Sixth graders though. Yeesh. I know. I was I was amazed I didn't get letters, but I was I was punting every single day. And this is about an adulterer getting hanged. What's adulterer, kids? Yeah, that'd be a little rough. Uh, let's talk about McCarthyism. Anyone know? <laughs> you know? No, no one knows. Well, what there's that a thing is. called communism. Okay. You know what communism? You know? Uh, really? Yeah. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Uh, we didn't like. It. I don't even remember what we read. Like it wasn't anything real. Like we definitely right. weren't tackling an actual thing yet. But um, they they read it and they, they did scenes from and uh, <laughs> they got into it. They were I don't know. I just was I was lost there. Did you have Twelve Angry Men? Was an excellent or no? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be the dullest play if you don't get it. Oh. But anyways, <laughs> so well uh, at least you you figured it out. So did you figure it out then? Was it a like a baptism by fire type? You kind of like all right. Each day you were punting, you weren't sure what you were doing, and, and yeah. you learned quicker because... You... Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so the second year I was a little bit better okay. um, because I found out what worked, and I found out what didn't work. Don't don't read Crucible with sixth graders. Was it all sixth and graders? No, it was uh, six, seven, and eight. Okay. But that's yeah. still... So yeah, that was uh, that would be like drama class what Lucas had in Ben Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which... Literally, he did a, a, the exact same thing he does now for a living. Is he was it was like a workshop. So it was a team building workshop every single day. Is how yeah. he ran drama class, which is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, yeah improv games and sure other yep. things like that. Yeah. So yeah, it took two years, and then um, we had uh, we had Elizabeth in Texas, and my wife kind of wanted to come back closer to home, closer to grandparents. Okay. And so we started to look for jobs and in North Dakota at all. Yeah. Anywhere near. Yeah. Anywhere near. Uh, gosh, I sent, I sent my resume all over the place. Um, and I got a call from, from Andy Dolan, mm -hmm. principal at North. And he wanted to, oh, I remember. Wanted to meet me. Uh, I found out later after the fact that he originally was looking, cause they just built that new theater. Yeah. And they'd had a ton of turnover in their theater teacher position. And so he was, he was actually looking to hire the drama director at Red River, where I went. Oh, okay. Uh, Dean Opp. And Dean said, no, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I am, but you should talk to, to Tom Gillen. And that's, and that's how you nailed it. That's how I nailed it. Well, and I even remember, and I don't think anyone ever told me this, but I remember feeling like you, like theater didn't really exist in, in, at that school until like a couple years before because... You know how you guys have the pictures of each play up on the wall, which mm -hmm. I'm assuming goes all the way down the wall now. But yeah. when I first started there, there was like three, and I was the third one. <laughs> and I was like, right, "Do y'all just get school? Like, what? What happened? Like, this school isn't new. Like, the theater must have like." Well, I guess in the 1970s, early 80s, I'm gonna say they were North was a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. They would go to like the one at competition and win every single year. Uh, Daryl McCroskey. And Paul Myers um, actually ran the theater program. Okay. And did a, a remarkable job. And then it went kind of in lots of different teachers showed up, and it was kind of yeah. in flux until until I kind of showed well, up. Well, somebody's got to own it. Yeah. You can't you can't half ass the no. theater department, which is what people were doing. And doing. something that when I got there, I couldn't believe this, but my first year, uh, the kids asked me if they were if they were allowed to change things on the last night of the performance. And I was like, no, you can't do that. Like, oh, but but that's what that's what we do. And I was like, okay, time out. Tell me, tell me what? <laughs> and he's like, that's that was North's thing, was that, hey, let's go to a North show on the last night because they change stuff. And what? it's like an anything goes kind of a performance. Oh. That was their thing. And I was like, no, we're never doing that. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I'm gonna be the lead tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you can't change anything. Wow. So I mean it weird. would be fun if it 
like I guess, but it definitely would sound like like I mean if you guys like worked on the changes, but also you can't just ad lib. Yeah, <laughs> like, apparently that's what they did. I'm gonna do this whole thing without using vowels. <laughs> Watch me go. <laughs> but uh, you did that. Was it you or Rachel? Uh, who who did that for one of the last rehearsal days? Yeah, we sometimes we do an anything goes rehearsal. Yeah, which so much stuck from it though. Yeah, and lots of I discoveries. Loved those. Lots yeah, of discoveries. That was a very good. Uh, I brought in my cane the first time with a character I was doing in a one act that she was doing uh, across, hands across the sea, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I brought in a cane. Uh, I brought in a giant mug. For my drink, because I had like this huge glass mug at home. I don't know why. No one drank beer at my house, like growing up. I don't know where this giant mug came from. And I just brought it in where everybody else is drinking out of these fancy glasses. If I like fill up <laughs> just a straight a bunch of whatever out of this giant mug, and that stuck in. And I think we we did a we did go a little crazy, but there was a couple things that completely stuck. Um, here's something I I, I will forever think about this is. So, uh, somebody jumped a line and I was counting the lines so I could eat because oh, there was eating sure. and I had cracker in my mouth <laughs> and David Tripto jumps a line and asked me a line when he should be asking to somebody else and I was like and I didn't know what to do <laughs> so uh, it, thank god it was only rehearsal there wasn't anyone there and I just said it <laughs> with a mouthful of cracker and just, <laughs> blah, 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 just shot it and I remember thinking how funny it would be to spit it out and say the line and put it back in. Is <laughs> now I kind of wish we stuck that in of sure. just like, oh, we do this and then just like put the entire cracker back in my mouth. I think about that line. Uh, that show ran very much like it's made by the dude who does Veep. Like yeah. it just like felt like that of yeah. a very That's a fun witty. Show. Yeah, it was just, we got a, at the One Night Festival, we got Best Ensemble, which yeah. made me, it was the closest thing I ever got to winning. Even. We have, uh, we've done away with the Anything Goes rehearsal. Okay. Because I okay. use it as a teaching moment. Yeah. Um, and I say, like, why can't every rehearsal be that? Like, you should bring your choices yeah. and bring new things to well, rehearsal every day. And then, you know, and let's see what sticks. So well, make those choices at happen. least for me, uh, it took me a long time to even know what, what, what the play is about. Like, you know, and I, I understand that you don't have time to sit down for a week and explain the entire themes of anything. And I, I bet you wish you did. But uh, I would, like, literally not get what is going on until we're getting close to the performing. And I'm still reading these lines. And I'm not, like, sure, I don't 100% even know what half of them mean because I don't really get the play yet. And that's that was another thing of just, like, I'm a slow learner, just period. I just am. I'm not good at, I'm not good at like reading so rehearsals like especially tryouts i'm so bad at them of like here read this i'm like i'm gonna stumble like i'm just not gonna be able to read and act sure and and yeah so so definitely hands uh, uh card stacked against me but uh but anyways the point i'm trying to make was it was so hard that on top of like that of like everything on top of it of like and now i'm have to act Trying to learn, figure out everything that's going on. We it looks like we have a lot of time. It feels like we have a lot of time. And then when it, you walk in, and I don't know how many plays you've done this, but you give that like, dude, we have a week away from our final dress rehearsal. What are we doing? Yeah. Like speech, <laughs> guys. And then that speech happens, and we're like, oh no. And then we all try to put it together. That, that happens time. every show. I know we, it does. Yeah, we call it that rehearsal. And yeah, of that. that. <laughs> we have to get this together, and Mark is still saying line. <laughs> right. And what's going on? <laughs> so you have to have to come to Jesus, and then things <laughs> just magically happen. It's, <laughs> it's the beauty of theater. Yeah. Or for me, it was, you know, just. Start getting drunk at the show. No, I'm kidding. No, you said you didn't. Yeah, I didn't. didn't. Okay. I, uh, I actually. <laughs> oh, wait. Whoa, whoa. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't drunk during the show. I was drunk during school that day. <laughs> okay. Oh. And I napped through it. Okay. In the dressing room. Okay. Well, slept it I'm a bad kid, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. We did a lot of vodka drinking junior year. It's not my fault. Well, it is my fault. I had a kid. I had a kid recently um, who graduated, and then after the fact, would tell me that uh, he would come high to rehearsals well, and high to performances because he thought it made him better and, and sharper and everything. Possibly, 
There's yeah. high there's high functioning pot heads. I'm yeah. definitely not one of them, but there's so, definitely out there. Yeah, that surprised me. I it, I would not. Have, I didn't. Well, that, didn't that's another it. thing. You're gonna compare that if you're trying to compare that to alcohol. I wouldn't understand how I would be better. Like I'm a little more social, but especially trying to give a performance that a director wants, I'm definitely not gonna be better at that drunk. No. But hi, marijuana affects everybody differently. It just straight up does. And I don't know your stance on marijuana, but I know that when I was smoking it as a teenager and in college, especially in college, I couldn't think in it. I, I, I don't have that ability. It was it like lobotomized me. And I know people where it's the opposite. Where they smoke weed before work, they smoke weed before this, and they function like a better person. Right. And and it's opposite for me. It's if I <laughs> if I smoke weed, I can't do anything, and that's not what I like to do. I'm a very active person, sure. very talkative person, as every single human being knows. And and yeah, I'm not gonna waste a day watching cartoons, and that's what I did when I smoked weed. So I quit that probably even before I you had me as a student. I probably quit when I was 16. Okay. Quit smoking weed because I started really early, and that was probably another thing. Is my brain's still developing? Let's <laughs> slow that down. <laughs> so, but but anyways, but on top of that, of the whole brain still developing, a high school student smoking that much, huh, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm for legalization. I'm not really for sixteen year olds <laughs> smoking weed, but right. but we all did, or not we all did, not you, but a lot of people did. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. um. But no one else uh, showed up to any rehearsals drunk since me? Not, well, not that I know. Not that, yeah. you know, well, uh, they've still messed up to. Notch on my uh, bedpost then. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I still talk about you, Mark. Yeah, well, that's yeah. good. I'm glad it's that. It's your legacy. <laughs> yeah, I get, I'm glad it wasn't like he did one of the coolest lip syncs or anything I, I like still, that. Okay, okay. There right. you go. I still show <laughs> your lip sync. I have a good I one. I thought I did a good one. You did. I made a mistake on it. I still think about it. Really? Uh, yeah, we... If you watch the video, um, Brittany Van Horn on one of the rehearsals stayed looking at the door, like, when are they going to come back? And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, stick with that. And because I could only see it from my point of view of inside it. And I didn't realize it looked like she could see us because there was no actual wall. So it looked like as I'm tossing Ginny Glazer down a well that uh, that it like that she can watch me do it. Sure. And I didn't realize that's how it looked from there. And then when I when I watched it afterwards, I was like, oh, that's a bad mistake. I should have just had to leave. I think about that. Still haunts you. Yeah, it still haunts me. Well, the kids who, like I said, I still show it because I think it was good. And the kids, you know, every a time. at the end? Every time. Okay, Holy so every crap. time you push Jimmy, there's a gasp. Oh, what? What's yeah. going on? And then when that noose comes down from the catwalk, <laughs> it's like, Mr. Gillen. You let this happen. What are you doing? Uh, like, Brandy freaked out. Uh, my my, who I hung out with yesterday, watching The Wire. Brandy Gaskell freaked out. Left when we did that because she had a friend who hung himself like four months before that. And me, I'm like, oh, whatever. It's for the show. <laughs> and and it, she saw the news and she's like, I'm out. And sure. she got up and left. But up in the catwalks, there was just somebody holding. Yeah, it wasn't tied to anything. No, no. In mm -hmm. in in there was no. Yeah. He he pulls up, but he. Pulled up to, and it wasn't a slip tie. It wasn't no, a slip knot. No, it it was a knot. Yep. I could have, I could have yanked it, and it wasn't gonna choke me. Yeah. Yeah, but it, I don't know. It was great. <laughs> Whatever. It was, it's a Violent Femmes song. I love Violent Femmes. Uh, still do. They're great. Um, that's what? a that's a band that I still discover okay. songs because they have a huge catalog. But either way, uh, yeah, that was a good year because I, I show yours still, and I still show Ginny's. Um, Which one? She oh, the the, uh, the mechanical. Yeah, I was in that. I jumped yep. around. Uh, did I have a mohawk or did I have long hair? I had short. You had short was, hair. And yep, that was my senior year. I was wearing a vest. Uh, I had a pinstripe vest I bought for like ten bucks from, or a, pin, a three piece suit I bought for like ten bucks from Sabers. There you go. And uh, that was an awesome suit. I still wear. I switched to sweater vest now. I wear sweater vests all the time. I'm not today. Uh, I was gonna, I, I, without even planning on it, I put on my Flog and Molly shirt that I got from that show, and then I realized it would have been too on the nose, like I was trying to impress you, so I took it off. Because <laughs> I realized halfway through it, like, I bought, he was there when I bought this, I have to, I have to wear something else. So then I wore a Robocop <laughs> shirt, and then I, I, I abandoned it and just threw a shirt over it. So. Well, I dressed up for you today. Yeah, you know, you went right from school to here, which, uh, I'm surprised you're drinking beer on a school night. Shame on you. 
It's all right. So Friday tomorrow, I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> I thought you were gonna throw it like you drink beer in school. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought you were gonna toss that at me. Oh man, uh, no, we had a horrible system for drinking in school. We would get orange juice and um, we would drink a little. We'd add vodka to get it back up, and once it stopped losing its yellow, then we would slam it and end it. And we did that a lot. That's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. So you know, watch out. There's kids who. You know, the perpetual vodka or orange juice that never moves. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll watch them. Yeah, watch for that. We have to watch for vaping now. That's... Mm. No, in our factory we do. Okay. And I'm like, God, just go out and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't school. You're allowed to smoke just out there. But people yeah. have to vape in the factory. Like, no one's going to notice that out of nowhere it smells like mint surprise. Mm-hmm. When it's like, it normally smells like a sugar factory. Like... Yeah, I walked, into the, I walked into the guy's dressing room uh, during the run of Newsies, and I smelled this car, this wonderful caramel smell. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, there's vaping. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, oh, we got to figure this out. I know it's going to be a thing. I got to get the cameras, you know, uh, got to find out who's doing this. And, I was, and then my wife was like, no, I have the coffee maker in there. Uh, I, <laughs> I, made, I made coffee. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what it is. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh... You know, it's, yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm trying to like now think smartphones must just be hell. I guess you guys are now a couple of years into it, but smartphones weren't around when I was in high school. Right. Yeah, there it's... was phones, but I didn't have one. Okay. Yeah. No, they have been. They've been awful. Like, this year's been much better. I don't know what has changed. Uh, I guess more teachers are kind of being more, you know, strict with the policy. But last year, last year even, it was just a nightmare. Like, yeah. Everyone, it's bad. At, it's bad at our work for it. Okay. Is uh, but I keep arguing if my station's running fine, why does it matter? Is what would, would you just want me to like, uh, like just stare? Uh, and and I've my arguments always been like, have I screwed up today? Like, is, is my station running fine? Do am I producing whatever station I'm on? Am I producing what I'm supposed to? Then why does it matter if I'm listening to a podcast? Like I don't, sure. I don't see why it affects anything. If anything, it's a morale thing. Is I'm staying happier because I'm listening to something instead of just sitting in my stewing in my silence, which I hate being stuck in my head because I have just a horrible, yeah. horrible brain, <laughs> and and I hate being stuck in it. So, but let's uh, I don't know. You want to talk about um teachers and why some of them rule and why some of them suck? I'm not gonna say names. <laughs> I'm not gonna say names. Uh, I want to. Uh, I just want to talk about bad teaching practices. Oh boy, this is something that's been stuck in my head for years. All right. Um, and I don't even remember the guy's name, honestly. Okay. But I remember walking into school, and I was a huge smartass. Uh, still am. Uh, walking into school, and I had a beanie on, and I honestly forgot I was wearing it. Okay. And the guy said, "Hey, you got to take that hat off." So being a jerk, I took it off, and then I sat it on my head, like over it. Okay. And then he screamed, like, not a thing. He just, like, oh, like, just, like, lost it. And I granted it was, like, 7 in the morning. He's probably an unhappy person. I get it. And he picked off my head, but, like, you know, like, pretty much smacked my head, which I didn't, it didn't hurt. I didn't make anything of it. Okay. And then he told me, this is why nobody likes me. That's oh. a bad, yeah, that's a bad practice. <laughs> I was like, that's a bad practice. I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> are you supposed to be doing the opposite? Like, are you supposed to be finding out why I'm acting out? But I know that I'm sure people walk into teaching like, oh, I'm going to talk to them like people and, and treat them like human beings. And then, like, after five of me, they're like, no, they're all monsters. Treat them like monsters. <laughs> I have a feeling that happens a lot. Like, it's like the prison guard policy where you treat yeah, them like. I, you can see that. Uh, I think I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Well, um, yeah, you're sitting in my... <laughs> better than doing a podcast drinking beer with me. We apparently had a rapport yeah. in high school. Um, Odd. <laughs> so I think my, I think my, one of my gifts, and if I, if I hang my hat on anything, it's that I try to make a connection mm-hmm. and I try to find out what, what you're into. You, I mean, you turn me on to Flogging Molly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if we're, let's go What's back up? there. Like I, yeah. I find out what you're into. I take a look at it, take a listen to it. I've listened to a lot of bad music Yeah. in my time. Just to maybe start a conversation. I got you into, I don't know if you stuck on it, but I got you listening to uh, Modest Yahoo for a hot minute, too. Did, that did not stick. Dang it. Sorry. I loved it. No. It didn't stick for me either. <laughs> but it was good. It's good when I was in high school. Uh, 
No, we were even playing uh, uh, Flash games together on your off period. That's right. We had nothing going on. Right. Yeah, we were playing Tanks, which is gone now. It just doesn't exist. Uh, but that was before apps. So, <laughs> like, now there's probably an app for it. I haven't looked. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that we was a fun game. That. We did do that. Yeah. And it, I, would, I, would, I would walk in and be like, you got anything going on today? And you're like, five minutes. And I'd walk back <laughs> in five minutes. They're like, I got everything done. Let's, let's get a quick game. Right. Because you had an not, off period at the same time I had off. And that's not hard to do. No, it isn't. You know, and so some teachers, some teachers do that, and some. Well, it's te some it's don't. something I've always had um, is I have a problem with uh, with respecting somebody because they get it. Like I feel like if if here's an example. So if if I feel like you, I need to earn your respect. You should, or if yeah, if 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 I need to earn your respect, you should. It should be the same way. If I walk into a, a room and there's a specific teacher who's like, you guys now have to respect me because I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. I have to, then I in my brain go, you have to respect me because I'm a student. Yeah. And if I don't feel it, they're not going to get it. And I hated, I've always hated that dynamic that a lot of teachers had is it was automatic that I had to re give them respect and treat them nice when I have to prove to them that I'm worthy of theirs. And that's bullshit to me. I feel like it's, it, it, it has to be either way. And that even goes with bosses. Is I'm never going to respect somebody who doesn't respect me. Mm -hmm. That goes still up till now with, with people who I work with. And that's probably why certain bosses probably don't like me at the factory. Whatever. Don't care. <laughs> still get paid. I'm union. But, <laughs> so they can dislike me all they want. They don't yeah, right. my But yeah, and, that, that, and that's always something I spotted and I hated it. Is, is those teachers who, why are, you, you know, why are you talking down to me? It's like, well, you talk down to me. What, what's why are you the superior here? I know you think you are, but I don't. I don't understand why you are. Is I'm not paying you. You're not. Get, you, you're sure you're giving a service, but it's not like I'm getting the service. I don't like. It's not like I'm getting food out of this. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's this this odd dynamic to get, and it's weird. Like a it lot is, of it's weird don't get it. how much power teachers don't have. <laughs> But they think they do. Yeah. Like, it could go really bad. Yeah. Really fast. If, if students were like, they, they, this guy or girl does not have as much power as they think they do. Oh, and, and I always remember the ones who didn't have any, who would get walked out on, uh, mm -hmm. walked over, and it would make me feel so bad. I can't even remember her name. I wouldn't say it anyways. But there was an English teacher we had, and it was like the developmental kids. It was the problem kids. And, like, she couldn't get a word that whole 40 minutes. And yeah. I was getting quiet. Like, guys, you could just <laughs> see her dying inside. And it made yeah. me feel so bad because she'd go like, ah. and she like, wait her moment. I was like, no, we're the, you got to <laughs> yell at us. We're those kids. <laughs> like, you know, it, it almost hurt. <laughs> like, yeah, I found, so I, I maybe yell once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been doing this now for, this is my 15th year at North. Okay. And so I kind of just got it now. And I find as much as the administration wants us to start off the year with something really fun. Yeah. Okay, don't make the first day touch talking at them. Make it fun. I, oh, the, I really have to. I have to talk at the kids and, yeah. and lay out the expectations right away. Yeah. Because um, a lot of it is fun, but it's not all right. fun. You're going to have fun, but there are some things we have to follow. You have to, This is your part of the bargain. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the fun, but you gotta come along with me. Um, and so I found as, as as I've been starting to do that and really make clear my expectations, my my behavior problems have just gone way down. Oh wow! And it's been it's been wonderful. So you just show them that it isn't fun, like and I then, it, then it's better. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> had like I haven't had like a jerky kid in my north classes for years. Ten. Yeah, <laughs> Except for that Mark Vigley. Yeah, jeez, yeah. he was horrible. No, I had a kid, uh, boy, after your time, um, little punk kid, yeah. wannabe rapper. Oh, uh, I was a wannabe punk. It's slightly <laughs> different. Who like got suspended because he would run around the theater and burn seats with yeah. a, with a lighter. Like those kids are not in my class anymore. I don't know what happened, but they're not well, they, there anymore. They were for a while. <laughs> uh, I never tried to burn seats. I once. Uh, I got suspended and somebody else didn't. I was a scapegoat for suspensions my entire high school career. <laughs> okay. uh, if, if somebody would be like, hey, this guy punched somebody, and then, then one of the principals would be like, was Mark around? <laughs> could we just, could we, 
We rope him into this? Any way we can get Mark on. <laughs> yes. Okay. But uh, so this guy uh, is like, I'm bored. And I was like, I don't know, light your book on fire. Like I said, it as a joke. And he lit his book on fire. He didn't even get brought to the office. I didn't. I got suspended. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I just, he's like, well, you provoked him. I'm like, I didn't provoke him. Like, if I, if, if I were to say that to you, would you feel like lighting your book on fire? No, because you're a normal human being. He apparently wasn't. <laughs> like, why is it me? Uh, but, uh, but anyways. Uh, all right. Uh, we kind of running a little low. Uh, I don't know if we want to jump all the way up to, uh, uh, like, what was north for 15 years? How's that been? Any, any crazy, insane, fun stories you got? Uh, goodness sakes. Was there any um, more me's? Is there a me every year? I like to say there's a, there's always a, like the wire, there's always a Duquan. There's always a Mark. <laughs> you get that reference, that's amazing. I love the wire. I love the wire. It's the best television. Yeah. I'm finally getting Brandy watching it. Okay. Yeah, she's on season two. Yeah. Uh, I've watched it, watched it all the way, like, start to finish, like, three times. Oh, and then so I good. got so... Like, I just wanted to do something new, so I looked up a, a, a top 60 list where it breaks down worst episode to best episode, okay. and I watched them according to the list, so non-consecutively, completely oh, order order, jumping all around yeah. the show. It really shows you a whole other perspective, but, uh, we yeah. Named, we named our second dog, uh, Stringer. Oh, nice. Uh, why of all people, why Stringer? <laughs> It's actually uh, Stringer Barksdale Gillen oh, was the full funny. name, Barksdale. and I wanted to name the dog But Freeman. Stringer was Belle. It wasn't yeah. even Barksdale. You I just know. wanted Barksdale. I just put it in there. Right. Uh, I wanted to name the dog uh, Freeman, because Freeman's my favorite character. He, well, he's the, the best he's police. Favorite. Right. Period. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't talk about it. We should just talk about the wire there. So that's... Right? Uh, excuse me. Uh, but, yeah, so... Uh, what was I going to say? I, I like to look at the wire of each season as, like, really well-done liberal propaganda. Okay. <laughs> because it kind of is. The first season is um, why is the drug war? It's one hundred percent why the drug war is bad. Uh, in liber in saying propaganda is a little rough, but it definitely leans a direction. And then the the next season is the benefit of unions and the the death of work. Mm -hmm. uh, season three, uh, spoilers, uh, drug legalization, <laughs> and then season four school system, and then season five just. All of it together which in is, newsroom. Which is your favorite? Of seasons? Yeah. I can't answer that I honestly can't answer that question. I want to say season season four is the easiest to say. Yeah. Um, that's, what, that's what I was going to But it's the saddest. It is. <laughs> it's hard it to is. get through it. Watching what happens to Randy Wagstaff of why he how he rats and watching what happens to a rat in high school, in yep. eighth grade, of how he gets weeded out and beaten on. It's too much for me. It's hard to watch. Yeah. Uh, especially since he's my favorite kid at the beginning. And then the fall of, like, Duke Kwan's fall is hard to watch, too. Is It's easier. I want to say season one because it's just like, here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm not tied to anything. Nothing ends at all. Season one has no ending to it. It's easier to, if I want to go back and watch something, to watch season one, but... Quality-wise, probably season four to three, three or four. Because okay. yeah. I think... Um, what's his name? Uh, 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 Bunny Colvin is one of my favorite characters. Okay. The, the major who actually legalizes drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the, what was the place called? Uh, uh, Hamsterdam. 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 But I think he's a, he's a really great character. And, uh, that's the first season where Carver has his switch and starts to be community oriented mm -hmm. police and actually become through a police. Because Carver's just like her, he's a giant piece of shit the first two seasons. And that's so, yeah, there's your answer. Season three. <laughs> season three, probably. Season three. All right. It's a All good right. one. Yeah, there's not, it's probably not a month that goes by that my wife and I don't somehow fit in what's in the cans <laughs> like somewhere in our lexicon it comes in it's like what's in the can that's a good one uh season two yeah that's season two um me and brandy are currently on it we just did uh last night uh we were drinking a 15 percent uh beer or at least i was uh she was drinking wine because she's a uh, she's a pussy i guess but you know as uh, i say that randy <laughs> 
You still have the teacher filter. You can never shut up. No. You told me not to swear at a flogging Molly concert. I almost hit you. I was like, if you, you're like, hey. watch your language. Mark. Yeah, you're like, you're like, don't say that. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? You are not my teacher. You were at a rock concert. I bought you a beer. I'm allowed to swear. Like, all right. Uh, do you not swear at all? I do. Oh, not on a podcast that my students might listen to. I really hope your students don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, especially if they listen to this and feel the need to listen to another one. But don't you want that? You want those subscribers? Yeah, but I don't. I don't want. All right, how about this? I don't want to be blamed for anything. Okay. Because I definitely don't keep it high school friendly no, at all. No. I, I, I we speak very candidly. We speak. You know, I don't want anyone to say anything just gross for the sake of being gross, but. You know, hi, honey. But but definitely don't edit your... I don't think anyone should ever edit themselves, you right. know, during a conversation, which, yeah, anyways. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, we got, like, six more minutes. All right. So, um, all right, let's not just talk about The Wire. That would be fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's go back to... you got you, We got about six minutes for it. Um, okay. Actually, no, never mind. I got a question. Go ahead. Is something that, that I think about often is uh, I'll have teachers that I'll forever live with, you know, your, who I've talked to, two of them now on this podcast, you, uh, you know, uh, TAC, uh, 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 Lucas from Midgarden. So looking at it from a student's point of view, uh, we have whatever, handfuls of teachers, sure. like compared to what you have for students. Even That's not even just this year we have one teacher for every 30 students you have um <laughs> so if you look at it from that uh, our point of view of how uh influential a teacher is to a student and how much uh impact they're going to have on the lives um do you just get a new batch each year and forget like because how do you keep all those uh connections all those duquans let's go back to the wire all those like, you know, the group of kids who for that year you or four years you get a connection with and then they're gone. Do you, like, usually they just go or do you, like, keep collecting memories? Ufta. Ufta. That's a, okay. It's something I think about a lot. As a teacher, which you are and I'm not, is, like, I even forget people who don't make it at the factory. I forget people who don't work there for more than a month. They're gone. So. Boy, oh, boy. That's a good question. I listened to a Freakonomics podcast about the phrase, that's a good question. <laughs> and that's me stalling for an answer. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll hmm, this is not a good answer, but I'm going to explain it like this. So I, I tell my seventh graders every year, because I only have my seventh graders for a semester. Yeah. And I'll say, I will, I'll remember you next year. When I see you in the hallway as an eighth grader, I'll remember you. But don't expect me to remember your name unless, <laughs> unless you were just awful. And yeah. I had to say it every single day. Yeah. Or you were one of the standouts. Yeah. Um, so so you can even think to say to seventh grade. You can come up to me. No, but they, they get it. Because eighth grade and eighth graders now they come up to me and they'll say, Hey Mr. Gillen, and I'll say hi. And uh, they won't give me the They'll say like Randy. <laughs> no, they won't. But before I used to say that, they used to come up to me, Hey Mr. Gillen, I used to say hi, and they used to say, Do you remember me? And I would say, yeah, yeah. Well, what's my name? And that killed me. Oh. I was like, I, uh, I don't, I don't remember your name. I yeah. just don't. Um, and then they get all mad. Oh, what? And I was like, but yeah, I have like ninety kids every yeah. year. I just can't. Um, so now I lay that out right away. First day of school, I say that, and it's so, really funny. And they and they buy it. And yeah, and that's fine. Um, so that's seventh grade. Now, if they can make it through eighth grade. Because there's, no, there's no drama. Class? Yeah. I've, I've, you move over the band? I travel. Yep, I travel. Oh, wow. Is that at Ben now? Yeah. Grade? Still? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So if they can make it through eighth grade and still have a passion for theater, because there's no eighth grade drama, mm -hmm. um, then I might get them in ninth grade. And that's when the, that's when the magic, I guess, starts to happen. And, you know, I get them involved in the program. Seventh grade drama. That's actually awesome. We couldn't get into it until ninth. Okay, they didn't have it in eighth. No, no, we didn't get Lucas until ninth grade. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you were ninth grade at Ben. Yeah, I was ninth okay. grade at Ben. I was okay. um, when I moved to uh, sophomore, we got 
sophomores on freshmen's came. Or no, no, when I'm yeah, that came in as a sophomore. When I moved to junior, that's when the freshmen's came. In. So okay. I was the last just sophomore class. Sophomore gotcha. being the lowest. Gotcha. Yeah. So. But other than that, so I'll I mean I'll be with them for four years. Mm -hmm. um, run them through the program. A handful of them will want to go on and do theater for a career. Yeah. And those are the ones that will stick stick around and, and you yeah. know, message Rachel and I, email, make sure that they stay in touch. So you've got like a trip to almost every year? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And for example, last year we graduated a whole handful of seniors that now we're on a, a message board and we'll just, you know, <laughs> I, as I was driving over here, I got a message from them. Wow. And so the, it's that now. Um, but some of the, a lot of kids from the early years, though, they're just there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I, I, well, I hope you, I influenced. And... You name dropped two of them earlier. Yeah. At least you got TJ and, uh, and uh, Dan Glazer, at least. But mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, then, yeah. So I guess that kind of answers, but not completely because then, so you're almost 50 50. Is if they, if they're standout and you actually do have a rapport with them, you do stick with them. And then, yeah, if they don't, they don't. But yeah, so that's that's it. That's that is actually what I asked was of I feel like me and you had a rapport. Did I just completely get replaced by the new kid with the mohawk? The answer would be no. No. It is the new kid with the mohawk, you also, you know, would talk to him and then I move on and you just so you're just you're collecting uh yeah. of of yeah. yeah, kids that are moving on, which is awesome. But I'll never know like um like the kid who I have in 7th grade but never takes a class in North. Yeah. I'll never know unless they come and tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. never know if if I don't I remember have. kids who I was in school impacted. So right. just like okay, yeah. like when I was at I w we went to our high school reunion and only like 30, 40 people showed up. We got to like three hundred people, mm -hmm. and there was even people there. I was like, hey, you. <laughs> it's just like thank God we had name tags. Yeah. As I started doing a thing where even though I like knew them. And they, everybody knows I knew them. Like when Brandy comes in, I would like read off her name tag like a show. <laughs> that way to show like, oh, I'm doing it to everybody. <laughs> so yeah. what I actually need to do, maybe they think, oh, he remembers. Well, yeah, you asked me, asked me if I could name my seventh grade teachers. I don't think I could. Uh, I just don't think I could do it. One of them. Because he looked like a gorilla. Like an <laughs> I'm not going to say his name because he might still be there. But one of the things that my my principal at Ben told me when uh, when Josiah, my son, was going through his horrible stuff, mm -hmm. um, I was I went and I talked to him because this was the first day. Well, this is a horrible thing to say right as I'm wrapping up. But this is the know, and I would just this is the day was that uh, this was the day that Josiah was uh, first diagnosed with cancer, and so I got the call while I was at Ben Franklin, and I was like. Okay, that's a bombshell. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go tell my principal. And so I go in there and, you know, I couldn't get it. I could not get the words out. Yeah. I just couldn't say it. And I started, I was crying. And yeah. uh, so I finally said yeah. it. My son has cancer. I have to go. And he's like, yeah, you get out of here. And so I go back in shock, back to my room. I start packing up. And I was like, I was like, I don't have any lesson plans. I have nothing. And he's like, Tom, Tom, in 10 years, no one is going to remember this class. No one is going to. He's like, that's just the truth. And I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, you go home. Yeah, you're like, gonna okay. remember this day. No one else is gonna remember okay. this day. <laughs> yeah. And that Skip was up. that was wonderful advice. Yeah. It it just put a lot of things in perspective. Like if I had a bad day teaching, guess what? They're not gonna remember that it was a bad yeah. that day. Was really and even bad. even if you perceive it as a day that you messed up, we might not. Right. Yeah. And that's it. Is is yeah. Uh. You know, and I, I forgot I was actually going to ask you about Josiah, but uh, but because I had a, a a story with that, of, uh, and I don't know if this is considered inappropriate or too personal, but I remember you telling us a story on our senior year. It was right when he was born, because when I met Rachel, she was prego. Yep. Uh, and then yeah, that's how we call it. It's yep. like egos, but it's a baby. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> I don't understand physiology, but <laughs> or anatomy. But anyways. Um, and then, so when he was a kid, like baby, baby, he spit up and there was something wrong with his yeah. throat and stomach. Uh, stomach, stomach. Okay. I can't remember what it was. I remember a joke he made about it. I made? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> no, it was actually kind of funny. It's horrible, <laughs> but it was actually pretty funny. Uh, and I love horrible humor, but no, he like spit up and it was a lot of, yeah, yeah like a huge, 
and then he's crying and you measured it and he said like I don't I don't care that you're crying I gotta measure this and that was <laughs> that was your joke and I I don't forever remember like ah that's good that's like a good way to do a bad tasting yeah, joke good parenting right there <laughs> yeah, that's good. no he had pyloric stenosis so oh, that's uh, yeah his stomach it's it's com it's common in a lot of males well not common but male babies have it where um yeah the this hmm, there's a the food goes down and your stomach opening, I guess, is, is, is smaller. Closed up. Yeah. Okay. And so there's nowhere for it to go. So, so it comes right back up. Back so they're right. just spitting out. Yeah. Wow. And that something that I'm assuming you have to catch right away because he's not getting nutrients for so long. Yeah. And, yeah. Like back in the day, he would be, oh, he would have been, he would have been, no, yeah. no, he would have been dead a long, <laughs> many times over. Well, yeah. If he it was, was back in the day. He was a, he was a, yeah. Well, and that's something that I've just being friends with you and your wife now on Facebook. Like for the last, how old is he? It was 15, 15 or 10 years. He's 11. 11, 11 years of like, he's a sick kid. And, yep. and that like, that put so much in perspective of like, of me wanting a kid was, what if we get a sick kid? And it's not even the same sickness of just, you know, um, I remember, and tell me if this is true or not, that he, you gave him a kidney. I did. Yeah. That's yep. awesome. That's yeah. amazing. I'm glad that <laughs> glad it worked out because I would I think that would be the worst thing ever. I don't know how genetics works, but if if they were like, no, your kidney wouldn't match, it'd be like, I can't help my kid. Like I would yeah. kill somebody. No, <laughs> he would have been he would have been put on a list, and we would have waited it out. And oh, jeez. Yeah, thank God that I. Yeah, Rachel was a match too, but she was she was going through uh, some kidney stone things. Yeah, so she jeez. couldn't, and so I stepped up and was. She was a better match than I was, but it's still in there. and still yeah. doing okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just a testament to how, how, how strong your, your family would be of just going through something like that. Not only one, but you know, multiple sicknesses mm -hmm. with him that just, holy, like, you know, I got the flu like once, two years ago and Jesus, <laughs> not much pu puking is horrible. And I've been fine since. So that's, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that I didn't, didn't even imagine that. Um, yeah, I, uh. I remember uh, me begging my wife for her to rub my back because she wouldn't go near me because I, I was contagious. Oh, yeah. I was like, can I just, can, can I not be shunned? Can you at least <laughs> tell me, like, I'm going to make it? Can I get some, some love? She's like, uh. <laughs> anyways, I think we're good. I'm glad that we, right at the last couple minutes, uh, brought in something very sad and heavy. But, uh, yeah, the, the place people podcast way. There we go. It works out. Well, thanks for coming in. I yeah, mean, this uh, was fun. We Thank drank you. through both our beers. We did good. Right. Uh, so, anything uh, you want to pitch? Any uh, play you got? Do you know what uh, the your uh, your spring stuff's going to be? Um, our spring show is uh, Shakespeare the Tempest. Oh yeah, which I knew is that. Not actually. typical high school. No, definitely not. Choice. Tempest is a little heavier. It is heavy, heavy. A little magic. Um, yeah, a little wizardy so stuff. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, the one act is kind of exciting. We're doing um, a play called "You're Welcome: A Bad Play Cycle." It's written by some uh, a young guy who went to East Grand Forks, Paul Thoreen, and then oh. went out to Broadway and started cool. his own little acting company out there. And uh, it's it's really a bizarre play. You you would like it. It's, okay. It's and when's that? That's gonna be right uh, after. That is the end of January, early February. Okay. The last yeah. day of January. So you guys are doing your you did your Christmas show in February or uh, November this year. You did your the musical. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so you guys did Newsies way. Is really it usually, early. Yeah. Really is early. it usually this early? I no. thought it's usually around Christmas is when you do them because a lot of times they are we, kind of uh, Christmas. The three, the three high schools rotate and we got the early slot this year. But oh, we, really? We wanted, we wanted to do a couple extra shows so we actually went a week earlier than normal. Okay. Oh, wow. And Newsies went good? I've heard nothing but good things. On my end, it was great. I thought it was Do fantastic. you usually hear bad? Do you think that people lie to you? Well, when you, know, when you meet the meet and greet, at the yeah. end of the show, you can who's going to come up and say it was yeah. awful? It was terrible. Well, why are you doing this? It's, like, oh my gosh! Yeah. So the the <laughs> it's horribles are replaced with the it was fine. It was good. Or there was the it's good. Yeah. When their yeah. voice has to go up, you know it sucked. <laughs> like no one's ever been like it was good, and they're right. lying. They're always. <laughs> we always say if someone comes up and says. Oh, it looked like they were having fun up there. That's, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the oh, worst one. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, no, that hurts. All right. Well, I'm glad you came in. Um, yeah. I'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Blue. Blah 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 blue blah 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 bl
Well, there you guys have it. That was my conversation with Tom Gillen. Got a... It got off to a pretty good start. I like to say I don't think there was a lot of ice that needed to be broken. And uh, so, and the ending got pretty emotional, but usually, you know, that's what happens. It was an emotional topic. I'm glad he was, you know, felt comfortable enough to talk about it. And he's a pretty great guy. Probably a better guy than I'll ever be. So <laughs> that's good. But he's setting a high bar. I'm not saying I'm a horrible person, but I'm just saying he's setting a high bar. Anyways, uh... That was it. Uh, thanks for listening, and come on next week's uh, November 18th. Uh, I'm going to be talking to the guys from Kamikaze Snowmen. It's going to be a good conversation, talking to the whole band. And, all right, talk to you guys later. There you go.